ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Nine Inning Know It All podcast. I am your host, Josh, Nine Inning Know It All. And man, Major League Baseball playoffs, they are just fun. It's fun. I love the, the playoffs, just the intensity, the fun, the excitement. And I just, I don't know, playoffs are different. Obviously, at any level, whether it's Little League or, or high school or college, playoffs are just different. And I love the Major League Baseball playoffs, and I wish I could watch more of them. I am pretty limited on how much I can watch right now, but I'm going to be, I'm going to find a way to watch the World Series, no matter what. Every game, every inning, every pitch, I'm going to find a way. But it's just Major League Baseball is not my most enjoyable level of baseball, but the playoffs I think are are probably, if not the, my favorite, my second favorite, just because of the intensity and the level of play. It just it's fun. So I'm glad that Major League Baseball is in the playoffs. I'm glad that things are going good right now. And I'm just, you know, I'm excited to see how things play out. And I'm honestly I'm more excited for next year when fans go out and watch games, hopefully. Uh, so that's really kind of uh where I'm at right now. But ladies and gentlemen, let's get past Major League Baseball playoff talk because you know what? Eh, eh, you can only talk about it so long, even though I do enjoy it. Let's get into our actual focus of today. I have got another NWAC baseball player on my on my podcast, which once again, I love the NWAC. I love the intensity. Here today, I have Balas Buckmaster. Balas, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Josh. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's been a little crazy year, as we all know. But for you, now that fall is going on, what things are you doing now that fall has started? What, what kind of uh, baseball are you into right now? Well, so our college, so our fall um, – our fall ball actually got canceled and, you know, as of right now, we're just having like player ran practices, you know, uh, two guys, it's me and Cody Russell, shout out to Cody Russell. You know, we've been doing a big part of running these uh, player ran practices. And yeah, we've, we've got a lot of guys on our team to buy in. They're all showing up, you know, it, it's awesome. But yeah, so usually what happens is like we, we go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it'll either be at a football field or be at a cage, you know, depending on what we're doing. We might even go hiking on that day. You know, it just all depends what we're doing. You know, we're just trying to stay active, you know, and, and continue to bond while we can, you know, before we actually can practice together. That is, you know, so, it, it's insane how how things are different because, you know, obviously we know that there are some states, some places where full teams can do whole workouts and practices and games and, and other places where you can't even get together like you guys and – it, it must be difficult, but at the same time, there's got to be a, a level of bonding that's that's occurring that maybe wouldn't have happened with normal practices. Right, right. It's just, you know, we all got the same goal, and that's what it, that's what it starts with, it's the same goal. And the goal is to win a champo. And, you know, in order for that to happen, you know, we all got to buy in. And, you know, that's, that's just what's happening. It's just all these guys, you know, they're hungry. Even these freshmen, it's crazy, like, just how fast they're just – catching on to things and there's no coaches there's no coaches it's just it's just us us sophomores running the thing you know like how any regular practice and yeah it's just it's awesome and it you know it it, it seems hard but for us you know when there's a will there's a way that's that's our motto you know so any way we can get it you know we're gonna get it you know and one of the cool things is you know given that you are a sophomore given that you've had time at the college level and other guys have had that experience. I mean, you know what's required of a practice. You know what goes into it. And even though you don't have the, maybe the organization of what a, a head coach has, you guys have at least been there. And so just sharing that, I mean, you guys, it probably feels somewhat normal other than the fact that coaches aren't there. Right, right, exactly. You know, we just try to make the best out of it. We also try to have fun too. And that's the biggest thing. Because if, if you're not having fun, then it's just, you're not getting better. It's just repetitive. So, you know, it's just keeping it keeping it fresh. That's all we try to do is keep it fresh. That is awesome. And, uh, you know, it, it's weird to, to hear that, but at the same time, it's also it's also a positive thing. I, I think it's great to see guys take initiative. And and really, at the at this level, you have to want it on your own. So coaches can't feed you and, and make you better. You have to want it. And, and this just shows. That. And then, you know, for, for a lot of the guys, having their summer and spring taken away, you know, anything just being out there playing catch is exciting for them I gotta think that there's quite a few guys who once they put that glove on they don't care what they're doing as long as they're out there playing catch or doing something baseball related oh 100 percent 100 percent 
And for you, for this this summer, I mean, you got to play a little bit this summer. You know, obviously with, with spring being shut down and then, you know, things all up in the air, what was it like for you to get on the field this summer and, you know, to be able to work on things? Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome to get get out there, man. Shout out to Ben Kruger. He's an awesome guy for getting that going because, honestly, like, for me, like, I needed that. You know, like, my freshman year, I was in and off for the bench, you know, and my sophomore year, you know, I was supposed to have a good year. And it was looking like that, and then it got shut down. So, you know, it was good to get back out there and clean off some rust and work on some stuff, you know, that I can bring this year. But, yeah, it was awesome. And I got to I got to play on the showcase team. We got to go down to Medford, Oregon. And that was just amazing getting to play with all those – all those D1 guys and D2 guys, it all is awesome. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, like I said, a lot of guys didn't get a chance to play this summer, but you did, and you got to play, you know, out at Olympic Stadium in, in Grays Harbor, and which, you know, I got out there, and it's just, it's an interesting stadium because it's very old, very historic, but it's just, it was kind of a cool feel to be out there playing at that area. Oh, 100%. I, I love the sound. If, if you heard someone get a crack of the bat in there, man, it was loud. And I, that's what I like. And it just – if you were at the game, you've seen how competitive they were. They were – it was just – it was amazing to be there in that stadium and playing with all those talents. It was just – can't beat it. Yeah, that was one of those things where, you know, obviously for a number of years covering summer ball, guys are out there goofing off. They're they're making it more of a joke than anything. But this year, you know, I, I didn't see that. There were – I mean, there were still fun times. Oh, guys no. had fun. But it was it was intense out there. Oh, 100%. And, and you know, it. I don't, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because we missed that, but it just, like, it seemed like every guy, one through nine on each team, you know, they were ready to go. They were ready to bang, well, you know, whether it was offense, defense, running the bases, you know, just all of it. It was fun. You know, it was definitely that college ball game, you know, that we missed in the spring. Yeah, that's definitely you – know, I think that's a good way of putting it. It felt like it was actually a college game. You know, there were a few guys who had just graduated high school who are going to be playing college ball that were in that, and they were you know, right up there with you. you guys, they were they were playing hard. They were asking questions, and it really was a great learning summer for a lot of players just because it was a little more focused, a little more intense, and, and I loved it. I loved being around that. And then, you know, for you for that this summer, what were some things you really tried to focus on and develop in your game since you had that that time? So my, my biggest thing this summer was was practicing on my two-strike approach. So at, at Pierce College, we have our own two-strike approach, and that was one of my weaknesses. And, you know, I, I try to be a perfectionist as much as I can. But And, and that was just something I was like, man, you know, like if I want to become a better hitter, I'm going to need to lock down this two-strike approach. So whenever I was in those games, man, I would really take those two-strike approaches, like really – Seriously, I'd step out of the box, do my two chest pumps, get in there and dig in, you know, and really, you know, work on that, you know, fighting pitches, staying alive in counts, you know, just really just trying to work myself in good counts, you know, and, and really not trying to do too much. Because my biggest thing is whenever I start doing too much is when I start doing bad. So, yeah, I think staying within was my biggest thing this summer. You know, and one of the things I think is that for baseball players – a lot of younger players think, oh, I'm just going to get better at hitting. I'm just going to get better at fielding. But they don't realize that you almost have, you have to get better at situational hitting, at at being able to hit in certain circumstances, whether it be a fastball, a changeup, certain counts. It, it, there's a lot more detail to be able to hit the ball than just saying, I'm going to be a better hitter. Right. Yeah, you're right. And then, you know, for you, I mean, you're down here playing it in Washington State, but you're not from Washington State. You're actually from Alaska. So what is it like to – to be, have played baseball up there, which is, I'm going to guess, a little different weather-wise, you know, stadium-wise, field-wise, and then to be down here, how is it different? And what was it like for you to make that switch? Well, off the top, it definitely the competition is way different. The style of play, way different. You know, we're not – in Alaska baseball, it's it's literally like – it almost seems like it's just backyard baseball. You know, there there is no squeeze play. There isn't no first and third. You know, none of that. So, like, coming up here, it's it's what I wanted, though. You know, I've always wanted to play at the highest level, you know, the highest competition. I'm very competitive. So, coming here, it almost felt like I was Charlie from Charlie the Factory when he got his golden ticket and got to go to the factory. You know, I'm coming here, and right off the top, I'm seeing freaking 
bunt plays and, and baseball games, seeing drag bunts. I'm seeing guys do like the craziest stuff that you just would not see in Alaska. And and the velo here is crazy. It's just every everything in Washington is just way better than Alaska baseball. And it's just like it, it was that it was that step up that I needed. And that's why I love playing here. It's, it's amazing to be here. Yeah, I mean, not only playing in Washington, but being a part of the NWAC. I mean, that is, like I've said before, the NWAC is a highly competitive college level. And, and a lot of people, and a lot of people get the misconception that JUCO isn't as good as other levels. But I, I, I will say this. I've seen four-year schools at NAIA, D2, even some low-level D1s that wouldn't necessarily match up to some of these JUCO schools we have in the NWAC. And it's just, there's so much talent in the NWAC. It's so, it's so fun to be a part and be able to watch players play. Oh, it is. And, and just the fact you get to watch them hit with wood bats is, is amazing, too, because I'm a big fan of the wood bat. I, I can honestly care less for the metal bats because, just you know, you hear that sound of the crack of the wood bat, man, and you just can't beat it. Nothing's better than that feeling, too, of just, you know, getting a nice line drive in the gap with the wood bat. And that's what I really love about the NWAX. And like you said, the competition is always great here. You know, and it's like it's every school, too. Every school has a competition. It's not just one school. It's the whole freaking conference yeah it is and that's why you know like especially the west region you have lower columbia you have pierce you have tacoma you got other schools that are up and coming like centralia and grace hart i mean it just it really is a lot of fun i'm i'm honored the fact that i get to be around it and cover it and i, I completely agree with you the wood bat I, I i only use wood Ooh. bat now when i got hit because it's just it feels better too i just love it exactly it's just I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like, would yeah, it's, I love it, man. <laughs> I did too. And, you know, for you, I mean, once again, you're from Alaska where obviously things are different. I've talked to a couple other players from Alaska and, you know, and then for you to, what actually got you to choose Pierce? I mean, that's a, granted, you wanted to come down here and play, but what led you to choose that school to be a part of that program? Oh man, it, it's actually a very long story. So like, it all starts with, um, so Alaska, our summer ball, is it's not like select ball here. We play American Legion ball. And during the summer, they have a thing called the College Coaches Clinic. And usually they'll get like eight colleges to come up and host a, a clinic, right? And usually the whole, the whole state of Alaska will come, all, come into Anchorage, my hometown, and they'll go to that camp and play in front of all these coaches. Well, Coach Davis, the head coach for Pierce, is always there and he, he pretty much runs it there now but he was there every coach was there treasure valley you know there was a number of NWAC teams there but um yeah i don't know it was just like the first time i met coach davis you know i was like man dude, that's, yeah, like, i don't know it almost seemed like he's like a twin of me you know he's like the same person <laughs> so i was like you know i wanted to go i wanted to go to pierce but the whole time you know he wasn't even talking to me it's funny but, like, so I ended up talking to, like, um, the first college to come up to me was the college uh, Treasure Valley. You know where that is. It's in Oregon. Yep. But at the time, the coach was Aaron Sutton. Shout out to Coach Sutton. That's my guy. But, um, yeah, he was the first coach to come up to me and was like, hey, you know, you want to come play at Treasure Valley? And I really like Coach Sutton. You know, he's a good guy. But I don't know. It's just something about Coach Davis. Just, like, I don't know. It was, like, the day I left the camp, I went home and I just watched YouTube videos on Pierce and I just fell in love with it. And one day my junior year, I, I called Davis and I was like, hey, man, like, is there any way like I could play for your team? And, he, you know, he was, he was dead honest with me. He was like, yeah, I mean, I got a spot for you, but if you come, you're going to be a red shirt. And, you know, that, that kind of, you know, that kind of brought down my confidence a little bit. But it was like, yeah, so I committed early. I was committed to go to Pierce very early. And then going into my senior year, I just went down the wrong path. And I got behind in school. And, yeah, I ended up not graduating on my senior year. And I literally had nobody calling me. And it was weird because I went from having, like, these colleges, like, hey, you want to come down, come play, to having nobody at all. And my senior year, I was supposed to graduate and go to Pierce, and I, I never did. And it was crazy because 
after after my senior year, Coach Davis never gave up. He was still like, hey, you're going to come. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to graduate in October for my super senior year. October came. I never, I never graduated. I couldn't finish. And then I was like, you know, it, it looks like January, Coach. I'm sorry. Well, January came around and I didn't graduate. I was still behind in my credit. And I, I told him, hey, Coach, it's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. And I ended up ghosting him, never even, like, I didn't talk to him. And you know, I was going into um, summer school. And this is, I, there was no way I had to finish summer school in order to graduate. And it, it was a grind. I was going to school from 8 to 5 o'clock. And on Saturdays, I'd have Saturday school. And it was literally three days before graduation. And I, like, I didn't, at this point, I didn't even think I was going to play college baseball. And it was weird. I, like went to class one day and my my teacher gets a call and it's from the office of the summer school. And the summer school is like a branched off summer school inside of the big school. So I don't know how he got a hold of this school, but Coach Davis called the school and asked them if I could come down to the stadium because they were having the college coaches clinic where I first met Coach Davis. And I wasn't even at the camp, I was at school. And he called me down to the stadium and I rushed down there as soon as possible left school and everything, rushed down there. And he was like, do you still want to come? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, I'll give you two days. And in those two days, you know, I signed up, registered, and bam, next thing I know, I'm going to Pierce. That is awesome. It's, it's awesome to see not only, you know, the things you had to understand, you had to learn and work from, but to see a coach that doesn't give up on a player, you know, that's – it changes lives. It really does impact a player for the oh, long term. 100%. I mean, to cut you off here. But, yeah, no, I thank Coach Davis a lot because he, he honestly saved my life. I, like, I didn't – I was going down the wrong path. I didn't know what I was going to do. And, you know, just for, just to know that someone's out there that I hadn't talked to, you know, he was still, you know, looking out for me, you know. And it just – that's why, I like, man, I owe it all to Coach Davis. He's a wonderful guy, man. He's done so much for me. And now now he's picked up my brother and he's helped my brother. Now my brother's going to college and, you know, doing the same thing I'm doing now. It's awesome. Yeah, and, that, and your brother also going to Pierce. And what's it like to have have that, to have him, first of all, commit to the same school that you are a part of? I mean, just to, how proud are you are as a brother and, and what is it like to be there? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. And it, it, it's, you know, it's hard because me and him are very competitive towards each other. So it's almost like a battle, you know, if I'm, if I'm not running, I know he's out there with me, you know, just going even harder, you know. So it, it's it's a grind, man, you know, it, and it's amazing to have my brother here, you know. It, it's something I've always dreamed of, you know, being able to play on the same college team as my little brother. So it's amazing. And it's also got to be good for him. I mean, the fact that obviously coming being a long ways from home, having not only someone he knows but family there, it got to give him a little bit of uh, a sense of, I guess, comfort or just a way to relax and have someone to be there for him. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Like I wish I had that. I wish I had a brother, you know, I came to college. He already had a place to live. You know, he already had a bed for me, you know, just like, yeah, he's very fortunate. He knows it too. And, you know, he's, it, it's just awesome because he takes it all in and he's very humble about it too, you know, because I, I do show him the way. <laughs> And once again, it's nice having someone who's not only there, you know, but also has gone through it and able to kind of share things with you. And then, you know, for you to get to this level, I mean, obviously you had to, you know, figure things out and work things out, but who in your life has kind of been that, that motivator and pushing you to keep going and, and obviously not just give up, but to, to be your best. Man, it, there's two people. And the first one is my grandfather, Russell, you know, it's, it's crazy. He, he does so much for us. And he, he just keeps pushing us. And, and the number, number one guy, or the second guy is my coach from Alaska, and that's Coach Ott. And, like, there was a time where I gave up on myself, and, you know, he was he sat me down in his, in his little office, and he was just like, man, I know you can do it. You know, like, don't give up on yourself. Because, like, you know, like, and at that point, I realized, man, this person wants me to do better than I want myself to do better. And that's when I knew. I was like, I can do this, you know, I, I got to want it, you know, I'm tired of having other people want it for me, you know, so that's when I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go do it. 
That's and man up and I'm going to go get it for myself and not for anybody else. That is awesome. And, and definitely when you hear Alaska baseball, Coach Odd is one that always pops up in my mind because I, one, I see him on yes, Twitter sir. all the time. He is, he is a big name up there for a good reason. He, he wants the best for the players up there. And I'd love to see that. Oh, yeah. And it, it's what you hear about him is all true. Everything about him is true. He, he's, a, he's an amazing guy. And then for you, I mean, obviously you got a chance to play in the NWAC, play in different stadiums down here, play in Alaska. I'm sure you've gotten to play a few other places as well. What has been your your favorite stadium to play in so far in your career? So far, I'm going to have to say LC. LC's park is amazing. Just, it, it's amazing to play outfield. The ball, the ball carries, the ball flies, and just how much room there is in the outfield there. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it is a, a beautiful park, you know, and it's yep. it's not perfect, but at the same time, its imperfections almost make it more perfect just because it really is perfect. I, I love the fact that that's where the the uh, NWAC championship is. It just, it really is a good spot for it. Oh, it, it, it looks great, especially on their streams. Too. It's, it's a wonderful field. I like it. There's no field like that in Alaska. That's why, so like when I go there, I'm like, man, this is like a, it almost feels like a minor league stadium to me. You know, I you just you don't get to see stadiums like that often. No, I completely agree. It is uh, for, for being not only college, but also a junior college level. It is really nice. I, I love it. I love the fact that it's theirs only. It's not it's not like it's a minor league complex. They rent out. It, it actually is on campus. It is right there in the, the heart of things. And and obviously the fact that it's five minutes from my house doesn't hurt either. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And And that freaking that gym is amazing. I would love to go sit on top of that uh, that second story where you had that nice view of the field. Uh, it's beautiful over there. Yeah, I, I've been up there, but I've never got a chance to watch a game from up there because I'm always down on the field. But one of these days, I think I'm just going to take a chair up there and just relax because it really – I mean, it's it's still closer than most major league baseball seats being up there because it's just right at the right field right. corner. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, you ought to do that. I probably will. I'm sure they'll let me go up there if I wanted to. And then <laughs> for you, I mean, obviously being ba a baseball player, a fan, someone who loves the game, uh, you know, we try and get our baseball fixed any way we can. I know for me, if I'm not at a game, I love to to actually watch baseball movies. So for you, what is your favorite baseball movie of all time? Okay, you ready for this one? I don't think you've heard this one on your stream or on your podcast yet, but my favorite baseball movie is The Natural. Oh, I have not heard that one yet. Have you watched it? Oh, yeah. I've watched that one quite a few times. That, that used to be my, my yep. movie when I was a kid. Like, my dad would turn it on, and I'd just sit there and watch it because it was the natural. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's almost like a superhero baseball movie, you know? Yes, that's, that's, actually, that's actually a good way to describe it. You know, when you get that lightning bolt, man, it just, it just is what it is. Yeah, and when he hits, a, like, he hits the, the ball out of the cover, like, you know, just stuff like that. It's, I love that movie. Yeah, that is actually the movie that got me to fall in love with old time baseball. Because you know, obviously, my dad he grew up in Ohio, so he was a big fan of the the Big Red Machine and the Reds, all that stuff. But that movie kind of really got me to fall in love with just that that era of baseball that you know, obviously, I'll never get to experience in person. But through that movie, I kind of feel like I, I did get to experience it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Just like how old fashioned it was, and yeah. Definitely agree with you on that. How about you? What's your favorite uh, baseball movie? Favorite baseball movie of all time is For Love of the Game. One, because I love it. I love the mental side of it. It shows it every pitch, every inning, the mental side. But also because Vince Scully talks throughout the entire show, and I can I can get down with that. Mm, okay. Yeah, I have not. I haven't yet to watch that yet. So I'm, I'm going to have to put that on my baseball movie list. Oh, that is definitely because, yeah, first of all, because Kevin Costner is probably my favorite sports actor of all time. I mean, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, 10 Cup. Yeah. But but in this one, yeah, he it really shows the mental side of things. And since I'm, I've always been kind of the mental side of things, I, I like that because I'm not always the most athletic when I was growing up. But mentally, I could handle just about anything. And so I love that aspect of it. It really is a good baseball movie. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to have to check it out now, now that you told me. <laughs> Definitely. 
And then, you know, last question I have for you before I let you go. I mean, out of the field, you always see younger players, whether it be high school players or, or Little League players watching games. What advice would you have for them as they're looking to the future, hoping and dreaming to play college baseball? You know, the biggest thing I tell them is always want to learn. Always want to add something new to your game. And, I, and always be coachable. That's the biggest thing is you want to be coachable, especially at this level. Because they're, they're like 10 times out of 10, they're going to play the guy that listens. And yeah. No, I, I can I'd say the biggest thing is be coachable. Yeah, that is, that is a big thing. Coaches do see things. They do pay attention to that. And it does play into their decision-making for, for good reason. But with that, Balas, I thank you for coming on. Man, I, I love talking college baseball. I, thank you just for taking the time to do that. Yeah, thank you, Josh. I, I, dude, it is amazing to be here. I thank you again for having me on, man. Absolutely. And hopefully come this spring, things will get going and I'll get to watch you play, especially if you come down to, to LC to be able to see you play a little bit and uh, have some fun, you know, taking some photos of you. Yep, I'm excited for it. Cool. Well, have a good day. You too, Josh. Have a so, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, that was Belas Buckmaster. Plays for Pierce Community College, which part of the West Region, the NWAC, which I love. I love the West Region. I get to cover it all the time, so I am, you know, I am a little biased on that one. But at the same time, you know, Lower Columbia is a great team. Tacoma is a great team. Pierce is always up there competing. You know, Centralia is getting better. Grace Harbor, Green River. Every team is getting better. They're getting stronger. And I think this year's, if everything goes right and we get, get some baseball in, it's going to be the most fun I think I will have had in my six years, five years, six years of covering the NWAC just because of how I think the talent levels will be that much higher. I think it's going to be that much more fun to watch, and I'm excited for it. But, guys, with that, I'm going to call it a, a day. I am Josh, and I didn't know it all. Until next time. Go listen to some of the past podcasts. This is episode, I think, 107. So you got 106 other podcasts to listen to. Lots of great guests. Lots of fun. Listen in. Have some fun. We talk baseball. It is what we do. So, guys, until next time, watch some baseball, relax, and talk to you guys later.